the next thing that we need to do is give it some taper. So when we look at this left to right, we can see that my template shows this taper. So that's what we're going to use a lattice for. Let's come over here to our outliner and let's organize this a little bit. I've got two pieces of geometry, which is how we're forming our objects. So I'm going to move these outside of the main collection and I'm going to rename these. So I'm going to call this cap and I'm going to call this one body. We can deform both of them at the same time, even though they're separate objects. So I'm going to press Shift S and I'm going to do cursor to selected to bring that right there. Shift A, and then we're going to add a lattice. So it's going to be pretty enormous. So let's just take this to five inches for right now. And the, the key here is that we just want to generally form it to the size of the object. So I'm going to press the S key, scale it. Until we get, I'll do it right basically in the middle S right about like that. Now, S key, I'm going to move my cursor pretty far away, S and then Y, and we'll constrain it to it's about like that. Let's come into the front view, S and then X, and about like that. Now, in this case, we don't need any, any more subdivisions because we're basically going to be just doing a taper type of operation. Now, it's critical that you don't try and apply scale here. Don't do that. That'll cause problems. This is one of the few times when you don't want to do that after scaling it. Okay, so uh, let's put it back in here. I don't want that there. See, this is selected, so it keeps dropping it. We'll just call this body lattice. And since we're going to be doing this in the left, we're going to come to the cap. And we're going to add a modifier. We're going to call this lattice and we want it to reference the body lattice. Okay. And let's do the same thing. We're going to come up to body and we're just going to do lattice there. Okay. We're going to reference body lattice. There we go. So now we can come up to our lattice, press the tab key and let's come to the top, select there S key. And then we're only going to go on the Y axis. Okay, so it's nice because we're deforming both objects at the same time. And then at the bottom, it's overshot a little bit. So S, Y, there we go. Good enough. Tab key. And we're going to come here and we're going to apply the lattice. Apply lattice. There we go. Come up here. Click Apply Lattice. So that's gotten it in one direction. So let's do this. I'm going to come over and hide that lattice. And we're going to work on the top because the top is going to have a little bit of curvature. So we want to add just a little bit more geometry to the top because we're going to deform that. So I'm going to press the Tab key. We'll add a loop cut there. I will change that to a value of 2 another one there, value of two, and then we're ready to add a lattice. I'm going to press Shift S. We're going to do cursor to selected, Shift A. We can add a lattice. It'll be enormous. Let's just make that three inches. S key scales it down to close to the bounds, S, Z, option Z to go into to X-ray. Okay. Now I'm going to move it just above the bottom down here, just above the bottom. We're going to take a look at that S Z scale that down a little bit more. Okay. Let's come into the front S X to get that scaled. There we go. Come back into the left view and let's set up in the lattice down here. Let's increase the number of V divisions. That'll work pretty well. Okay, now let's name this. We're going to call this cap lattice. And in the cap itself, again, we need to assign a lattice modifier so it attaches itself, hooks into the lattice. And we're going to tell it to hook into that. There we go. Now we can come over, tab key goes back into edit, 
and we can select a couple of points to test this out and we can move it down. But watch what happens down here at the bottom. It deforms the bottom even though the bottom is outside of the lattice area. So I'm going to undo, press the tab key, and we need to tell it to restrict the deformation. So I'm going to go into edit mode for the cap. Let's go into vertex mode. Let's select just these top vertices. Everything but the bottom row of vertices. We're going to come over to object data properties and under vertex group, we're going to add one vertex group and we're going to call this lid verts to deform. Make sure you assign. That's very important. Tab leaves edit mode. Now let's come over to the modifier down here for the lattice and we need to tell it to restrict the deformation to those specific vertices that we just assigned. Now we can come back in to the lattice itself. Tab goes into edit mode and now we can modify it and you see it does not cause the deformation on that very bottom row of polygons. There we go. So now we can just do some quick editing to give it sort of that curvature that we want. And that works pretty well. There we go. Just come back to the mesh itself and we're going to apply that and then we can hide the lattice. Okay, there we go. So now all we need to do is come in and give it some thickness. Okay, so the rest is just a matter of coming in and adding a modifier to it. Now, if you remember, we still have a subdivision surface modifier applied. Let's turn off on optimal display. So we need to consider that when we add it to the stack. Come up to add modifier and we're going to add solidify. It's going to initially be pretty normal and we do want it to be on the bottom of the stack. We want it to apply subdivision first and then we want it to give thickness to that subdivided geometry. That's the correct order. So we're going to come down here and give it 0 0.05. And that's a little bit more appropriate for sort of the thickness of the plastic. Just something about like that. Now we need to do the same thing for this. So we'll come up here, solidify 0 0.05. And there we go. Now, is it possible, we, we talked about earlier, is it possible if we go into edit mode up here, that you, do you see how this also has that vertex right there? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out and, and say, you know, maybe we could modify this just a little bit to be even a little bit more efficient. Now, this is purely for demonstration purposes. This is by no means a massively complex object, but it is something you can think about when you're modeling much more complex objects, because I've modeled far more complex things like this. So we're going to come down to in vertex mode here. We need to come down to crease edge, just move the mouse a little bit, and then just set the value to minus one to remove that. But I, you know, I actually think that we could do this. I could take these, those two, and we're going to dissolve those. And then we could press the K key and do this. Hit return K and terminate like that. Okay, so that's a small thing that you could do in terms of reducing the complexity. In fact, we could do the same thing here. I could remove these, dissolve. Okay. Dissolve and then K, terminate to there, right click, come here to here and return. So that's just a thing that you could do if you were wanting to really start thinking about reducing complexity on far more complex objects, because this area here, it's all planar. In fact, we could, you know, we can do that. We could come here, we could go select linked, linked flat faces, and that gives you much more control over reconfiguring polygons. This is why you don't always need to have perfect quads on a subdivision surface. Okay, so let's leave edit mode. We can turn subdivision back on. Let's turn optimal display on. Okay, now the final thing that we need to do here is we need to add a lip. So we're going to repurpose some of the geometry that we've that we've got right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these two vertices right there 
S key and then scale along the X axis. And I'm going to get them to about right like that. Okay. So now we can come over and select an edge mode. These two edges. In fact, I'm going to turn off subdivision just to make sure that and thickness are not kind of visibly getting in our way. E key and then press Z, pull it down a little ways and then press the E key again and then Z, pull it down so it's about like that. Now if we look at this in the front view, we're going to press S key and then X and we're going to scale it so it's about like that. In fact, we can do the same thing here. S key, X, just scale that. So it's about like that. In fact, I think I'm going to scale these just a little bit more. S key X. There we go. Something about like that. Okay, so that's going to be like the flap that you use your thumb to flick open the cap. Now what we need to do is come in here and add a couple more cuts. And then in vertex mode, just because it's easy, easier to see on edge than in edge mode, press option Z to go into X-ray. I'm going to grab this bottom vert and I'm going to pull it out because it, 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 it kind of tapers down, kind of flares out. Okay, and we'll just quickly sort of do this. Then you can play with it. So it produces that kind of flare down like that. Okay, here we go. Now, if we turn on subdivision, the subdivision is going to cause the rounding to go all the way down here. So if we come in and turn that off, do you see how it's doing that? Doing that? And I'd like it to be a little bit more constrained. This is where I'm going to press the K key and I'm going to click here to here to introduce a triangle. K key, and we'll do the same thing on this side. I'm not going to bother mirroring it. There we go. That's sort of a cheap and easy way of doing that. <laughs> Another place where a triangle will work. Let's tab key, leave edit mode, leave x-ray, and we need to come in and deal with this right here. So press the tab key, take this vertex and this vertex, and we're going to come up to vertex mode again. And we're going to do a vertex crease. So just I'm mousing left to right. You can see that suddenly appear. And we need to make sure that's just exactly one. And there we go. Okay. So now let's switch over into like a shaded mode. Come over here. There, that's easier to see. In fact, I think here when I when I look at that, do you see there's a shading bump right there? I think I'm going to form that a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this polygon and this polygon. I'd like it to be planar to this region. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select a vertex right there, press Shift S, do cursor to selected, and then when I reselect these two poly these two polygons right there. I'm going to come to the scale tool, but I'm going to press the period key and I'm going to say I want the, the pivot to be at the 3D cursors location. And then when I switch back over and I zoom way in like this, I can scale from this point, which is the flat point. So now I just come over, scale that, and we'll just set that to zero. And this is very typical workflow. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go into like a wireframe view in vertex mode. So now we can just play with the positioning. I need to be an X-ray like that to play with the taper. That is a better shape. So now when I leave edit mode, let's turn on thickness. Look at shading. Option Z to leave X-ray. That's better. So do you see how that's, we don't have that visible bump right there. And there we go. All nice and modeled and ready to UV map and have it integrated with the rest of the package.